I was recently hired to take photos and video of an incredible brand new $12 million yacht. In another video coming up, we'll show you the behind the scenes of how we actually filmed the commercial. But in today's video, I'm going to show you how I took photographs of different rooms on this boat. Everything I'm going to show you in this tutorial is going to be relevant in other genres of photography, product photography, car photography, especially architectural and real estate photography. However, this is going to be particularly helpful if you're having to shoot a very small, tight space. Let's get to it. I'm shooting now on the Sony a7 IV and I've got the 12-24 f2.8 lens. Now, most architectural photographers will tell you that 12 millimeters is simply too wide and it's going to create warped out looking shots and you should use something a little bit tighter. But in cases like this, 12 millimeters is basically our only option. Now, maybe I could get away with a 14 or 16 millimeter lens, but being that I only have so much time on this boat and I wanna capture as much as possible, it's much more important that I shoot wider than I think I need. I can always crop in later. So I'm going to be taking all of these photographs at 12 millimeters. Obviously with photography and video, the number one thing is lighting. And when it comes to video, we don't have as much control because we're having to get it all in one shot. But when it comes to photography, we have the option to merge images together and get the lighting looking absolutely perfect. And of course, the important thing to get here is the view out the windows. That's something that I just can't pull off with video, but I can do with photography. Now remember, once we start taking pictures, we can't touch the camera at all. We don't want it to move. We want everything to line up perfectly afterwards. So I'm not actually going to control the camera with the buttons on the camera. I'm going to link my iPhone to it and control the camera from my iPhone. Of course, we also don't want the camera focusing in between each shot. So figure out your focus and then set it to manual. For camera settings, I'm shooting in RAW, at F8, at ISO 100, and I'm setting my shutter speed to change my exposure. Remember, because we're on a tripod here, it doesn't matter if we have to go to a 30 second exposure, the shot will still be sharp. For the first set of shots, I'm going to bracket images of the room with the house lights on and the shades closed under, correctly, and overexposed. I'm then going to turn the house lights off, open the window, and again, bracket these shots as well. Now, an important element of this shot is capturing the view outside. When you cut this out to put another view in this window, it's not going to look realistic at all because you're gonna have all this white spilling over the edges of your window frame here. So what you can do is darken it up, get a correct exposure for the glass, Obviously the inside is going to be way too dark and then we're going to flash a ton of light in here to balance it out. So I'm going to set my camera to F22 so that I can expose for the windows themselves. And as you can see, the inside becomes very dark at this point. And then I need to balance out the interior light so I can get the window frames looking good with the view outside. And the only way to do that is with a strobe. So I'm just going to strobe into the ceiling and all I'm looking for right now is to get an even exposure between my window frames and what's outside the windows. I also walked into the shower and started flashing directly into the room to get some sunbeam looking light that's going to cascade across the bed. Now that we have all the shots we could possibly need, let's go into Lightroom and pick out the best ones to put together. All right, looking at these shots with the house lights on and the shades closed, I think this is the best shot here. What I'm going to do is fine tune it. The white balance looks a little whacked out. I'm just gonna go to auto and see what that does. Looks a little better. I want a hint of warmth, and I'm just going to rate this image three stars. Looking at these natural window light shots, I think this is the best image, and I'm not going to be using the left side of this image, the window. I'm going to be using the bed, because if we have the windows open, we're going to expect window light to be hitting those pillows on the bed. So I think this looks good. I'm just going to once again fine tune my white balance and everything, just to get it matching the other shot. And again, I'm just gonna rate this three stars. Now I need a shot of the windows looking good. I want the scene outside the window and I want the window frames to be balanced correctly. So I'm just going through these shots where I bounced my light into the ceiling. And I feel like this is the best shot here. Once again, I'm just going to mess with the white balance to get it feeling just a little warm, but not too warm. I do really like this sunbeam shot of me shooting light out of the shower. So I'm going to rate this three stars as well. So now what I need to do is make sure that each one of these images that I've chosen is cohesive. So we can click the filter button to show only the three star images. 
and I just want to go through each one of these shots and I want to make sure that my white balance kind of matches each shot. If this is going to be my main photograph or like my base photograph here, check out the tones on these pillows and uh, the bedspread here and then check out what it looks like with natural light. Now we are used to warm incandescent lights and bluer outside natural light. So there can be a slight difference here, but we just don't want it to be so wild that the, the picture just doesn't make any sense. So I'm just jumping back and forth between these shots, trying to get it fine tuned to feel realistic, but also look good at the same time. Now remember, this is the shot we're going to be using this side of the frame here. So I'm just gonna jump between these two again and uh, I might warm this up just the littlest bit to try to get it to match. Now that all the images are ready, we can highlight them all by holding shift and clicking on each one. And then we can click on edit in and open as layers in Photoshop. Now you may have noticed that this image kind of looks wonky, like nothing is quite straight. The bed looks like it's going down, but the vertical lines look straight. What's going on here? Well, the room isn't actually square. It's built in a strange way uh, because of the shape of the outside of the boat. So that's something that we're going to have to fix once we do all the editing to this shot. So this is our base shot. It's looking pretty good right now, but we are going to add elements from each of the other layers. Let's start with the bathroom light here. And there's a few different ways that we can do this, but um, basically I am just going to use the lasso tool and I'm just gonna highlight and I'm going to hit the mask button down here. I'm then going to change the blend mode to lighten. So right now the only thing showing up is what's brighter than the layer below it. So what we're going to have to do is brighten up this beam of light so that it shows up. We can create an adjustment layer here with curves. And then we're gonna right click on this layer and go to create clipping mask. And now when I brighten this up, you can see it's revealing more of that beam of light. Now at this point, I'm just going to paint away what feels unnatural to me. So I'm gonna click on the mask here and use the brush and we can just paint this way. I don't think it looks good up here. And of course I don't want it showing up in the bathroom either. All right, next up, I want to mess with the lighting hitting the bed. So I'm going to switch these layers around. So natural light is this one here. I'm going to hold the option button and click the mask and that's going to make the whole thing black. And then I can um, reveal by painting white on my scene here. And I'm just gonna hit these pillows. Just trying to make it look like the lighting is coming from the windows rather than up above. And I also think I like the way it looks up here. Finally, we can add the view. I'm going to hold option, click the mask button, and once again, just paint this in. Now I need to cut out these windows using the pen tool. If you don't know how to use the pen tool, watch a tutorial on YouTube. Uh, it's frustrating for a second, but once you learn how to do it, you will use this tool forever. All right, once you've created a path, click on the path window here and rename it because if you don't, it will get deleted. All right, on our path here, I'm going to right click, make selection, feather by one pixel, okay. And then I have a stock image of water here and I'm going to copy that and I'm going to edit, paste special, paste into and that is going to paste it just into our window view there. And I'm just trying to find a realistic horizon level here. Now, one thing that's not making much sense is we have these sunbeams coming through on the counter here and then across the bed. So the sun should be up here, but it's kind of dark right here. So I'm just gonna click on this layer and go to filter, render, lens flare, and we can put the lens flare back on that side Hit okay, and that's just gonna make it seem like the sun is in that direction over there. And then once again, to make the sky look perfect, we can create an adjustment layer. We'll go to curves, right click, set this to, 
create clipping mask. And then we can just like brighten it up a little bit, maybe add a little bit more contrast, something like that. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did to the window to this TV here. And once again, go to paths and we will name this TV. And just for simplicity, I'm gonna put this exact same shot on the TV here. Make selection, zero pixels, okay. Edit, paste into, better. And then I'm going to click on this layer and click edit, transform, skew. And I am going to skew this picture onto the TV. Now to make this look realistic, we're going to lower the opacity here to something like that. So we're gonna hit function, shift, option, E, and it's going to create a new layer while keeping all of the additional layers below here. I'm then gonna start dragging these guides down to different horizontal and vertical points. And then I'm gonna to go to edit, transform, skew, and I'm just gonna start pulling this back into place. And now we can go to View, Guides, Clear Guides. This is looking pretty good. Now I'm just gonna go in and just clean up a few things like this smoke alarm, I don't really like that. All right, this shot is done. I think it's looking good. I think the, the crop is a little strange. There's like almost too inf much information on the top and the bottom. Um, and I think this just goes to show you how important 12 millimeters is because I'm not sure I wanna crop that much off the sides. I think I might just wanna crop the top and the bottom a little bit. So, so on the crop tool, we could set it to 16 by nine and just remove some of that ceiling there. And just make sure if you wanna you know, save this, don't click delete cropped pixels. That way you can always come back and get all of the information from your Photoshop document. I can see this little handle right here, it's kind of bothering me. And then maybe the back of this pillow is bothering me too. So I'm gonna crop in just a little bit more. I like that a lot. I think that looks awesome. Well guys, hopefully you've learned something today. Even if you're not a full-time interior yacht photographer, you can use this style of shooting and editing in so many different genres of photography. And I have learned this style of shooting from many of the world's best photographers as we have filmed these long photography tutorials with them over the years. And right now we have started the biggest sale we have ever done before. You can find all of our tutorials at fstoppers.com store. And right now these tutorials are the cheapest they have ever been. And the more you purchase, the more you save. If you're interested in shooting spaces like real estate and architecture, check out our series that we've done with Mike Kelly called Where Art Meets Architecture. If you're interested in landscape or cityscape photography, check out this series that we've done with Elia Lacardi called Photographing the World. Maybe you wanna learn more about product photography. In that case, check out The Hero Shot by Brian Rogers Jr. If you wanna become a headshot photographer, check out our tutorials with with Peter Hurley and Dylan Patrick. If you're already a decent photographer, but you wanna figure out how to get the big jobs and how to make the big bucks, check out our tutorial on the business of photography with Monty Isom called Making Real Money. We have tutorials on fashion photography with Siobhan Wong and Clay Cook. We have a swimwear photography tutorial with Joey Wright. And we also have tutorials on wedding photography, videography, editing, and using different programs and software as well. And if you're interested in photography in general and you don't know where to begin, may I suggest our tutorial called The Well-Rounded Photographer. In this tutorial, we have eight of the instructors that I mentioned previously, all working together to create unique lessons for one long tutorial. If you're trying to learn as much as you can from as many different photographers as you can, this is definitely the tutorial for you. As I've said, this is the biggest sale we have ever done before, and the more tutorials you buy, the more you can potentially save. Click in the link in the description below to check it out for yourself or go to fstoppers.com slash store.